As I described on CD number one, before you can create a 3D feature, you first need to generate a 2D sketch. So the first thing I want to do is activate a 2D sketch on the XY plane. And then I'm going to sketch a rectangular profile that I will use to create my first feature. I will go ahead and apply the two dimensions to specify the size of the rectangle. And now I can go directly to a feature tool. I'll first demonstrate the Extrude Boss tool. After I select the tool, the Extrude Boss dialog appears, and Sketch 1 is already populating the sketch because I was active in that sketch when I selected the Feature button. The next thing I need to do is to select which type of Extrude Boss feature I want to create. The options available are To Depth, Midplane, To Next, or To Geometry. I will begin by choosing the 2 depth type, so then I can specify a depth to create the 3D feature to. Also notice that you can click and drag the preview node in the work area to change the size of the feature. You can also activate the equation editor from here by clicking on the equation editor button. The equation editor dialog appears and you can specify the depth of the extrusion using parameters or equations. The extrusion will be created in the direction normal to the original sketching plane by default. You can change the extrusion direction if need be. The extrusion is created in the positive direction by default, but you can reverse the creation direction by clicking on the reverse checkbox. As I check and uncheck the box, the preview updates for the appropriate direction. You can also specify a draft angle as you're creating an extrude boss feature. And finally, you can enter a custom name in the label field to distinguish important features in the Design Explorer. Once I'm finished entering the parameters for this feature, I simply need to click the OK button to create the feature. As you can see, the feature is now created in the work area and is also listed in the features list in the Design Explorer. So as I build features, each feature that I add to the part will be listed in chronological order in the features list. Now I will edit the first feature that I've created by right clicking on it in the Design Explorer and selecting Edit. This time I'm going to uncheck the Along Normal option and now I can click in the Select field which would then allow me to select either an edge or an axis as the direction. I'll specify Axis 2 here and then click the OK button. Now the sketch profile will be extruded along that axis direction, rather than normal to the working plane. So moving on, I will delete this feature I've created by right-clicking on it and then selecting Delete. Deleting a feature does not delete the associated sketch, so I can reuse the sketch. So now I'm going to go ahead and select the Extrude Boss tool once again from the Part Modeling toolbar and now I need to specify the sketch to be used. So I'm going to click in the sketch field to activate it, and then I can go directly to the sketch in the work area and left click once to select it. Sketch 1 will populate the sketch field now. I could have also selected the sketch from the Design Explorer. To demonstrate this, I've cleared the sketch field, and then I move my cursor over to the sketch in the Design Explorer and left click once to select it. So again, Sketch 1 now populates the sketch field. And again, the preview of the extrusion is displayed, and I'm going to change the type to a midplane this time around. The midplane type of extrusion creates half of the specified depth on either side of the working plane. As you can see, I've specified a 5 inch depth, and this will place 2.5 inches of geometry on either side of the working plane. Next, I would like to illustrate the use of the 2 geometry type of the Extrude Boss feature. As you can see, I've already created one feature here. Now I need to select the plane to use as the sketch plane, and I'm going to activate a 2D sketch mode on that plane. And now I'll just sketch a simple circle, and then I'm going to go ahead and place a measurement on the circle. And I'll make the diameter of the circle 2.5 inches. And then again, I'm going to go directly to the Extrude Boss tool, 
And for this example, I'm going to select the two geometry as the type. This allows me to create geometry up to the target plane or target face. So after selecting two geometry from the type list, I need to click in the target field. Once that field becomes active, I can then specify the target by selecting a face on the model or another reference plane. So I've left clicked on the face here to select the face in the model. I can also enter an offset distance if need be. When you're finished specifying the options, just click OK to create the feature. So you can see the feature started at the chosen sketch plane and was created up to the face of an existing feature. I'm now going to edit the feature that I just created and I'm going to change the target. So I need to click in the target field again and this time I'm going to select a reference plane to be used as the target. So I'm going to left click on the existing reference plane in the work area and then click OK to generate the feature. So you can use this type of feature to create geometries up to an existing face or plane. The last type of extrude boss feature that I can create is the to next extrude feature. So again I've already added a couple of features and now I'm going to go back into the sketch mode and sketch a new profile that I will use to create an extrude boss feature. This is going to be a simple rectangular profile. And now I'm going to select the Extrude Boss tool, and that particular sketch I just created populates the sketch field. And now I'm going to select the To Next type from the pull-down list. And when I select the To Next type from the pull-down list, the software automatically detects the next geometrical face to create the extrusion up to. As you can see, the arrow previews where this feature will be created. Clicking OK, the feature is then created up to, in this case, the cylindrical face on the existing feature. You can also reverse the creation of the to next feature if you'd like. So I will edit the existing feature I just created, and then I'm going to select the reverse checkbox, and notice that the preview arrow changes direction to show a new feature creation direction. And now clicking OK generates the feature up to the next available face. So as you can see from all the previous examples, a boss feature creates or adds material to the solid body. I'm now going to proceed to the extrude cut features, which removes or cuts material away from the solid body. I have a part already started with a couple of features built. And now I'm going to select this side face as my working plane and then activate a 2D sketch on it. I'm going to select the circle to be used as my sketch profile in the first example. So I'm going to sketch the circle and then apply a dimension to it. Then I'm going to make the diameter of the circle 2 inches. I'm also going to add two more dimensions to position it correctly on this face. Once I've located the circle, I will select the Extrude Cut tool and the Extrude Cut dialog opens. Since I've chosen the tool directly from the sketch mode, the sketch is already populating the sketch field. Now notice the parameters of the Extrude Cut dialog are exactly the same as the Extrude Boss dialog. So once you learn how to use one, you can easily use the other. The only difference is that this will remove material Whereas the extrude boss created material. So as you can see, I've created a hole on this side face of the part. Next I will edit the extrude cut features I just created and change the type. I'm going to select through all as the next example. When I select the through all condition, after I click OK, the cut will pass through the entire body in the direction normal to the working plane. So as you can see, the hole passes through the entire body now. 
Now I'm going to go back and edit the feature once again. Right click on the feature name and select edit. And now I'm just going to keep going down my type list. So next up is the mid-plane type. The mid-plane type would remove material on both sides of the working plane if applicable. The next option is the to next type of extrude cut, which creates a cut through the next available face on the model. At the next available face, the extrude cut will stop. If the preview arrow is pointing in the wrong direction initially, Remember that I can just check the reverse checkbox to reverse the direction. Then click the OK button to create the feature. As you can see, the hole is created through the next face but stops at that point. Now I'm going to proceed to the two geometry type of extrude cut feature. So again I'm going to edit the existing feature. And from the type pull down list I'm going to select two geometry. And again I need to click in the target field to activate it. And then I can select either a plane or a face on the model as the target. In this case I will select an existing reference plane and then I can click OK to create the cut. Now the cut passes from the top face all the way to the reference plane. As I rotate this view I can then see that the bottom of the cut lies on the same plane as the reference plane I used as the target. It's always a good idea to try to minimize the number of features you use to model your parts. So let's say I want to add four holes to this part, rather than just one hole. One trick I can use is to edit the existing sketch profile I used to create the existing hole. So I will edit that sketch now. And now I can actually place additional circles in this sketch. When I exit the sketch, this will result in four cuts being placed using only one feature. So now I will go ahead and sketch three more circles. Note that I'm taking advantage of the constraint inferencing to make these circles equal to each other. You can see the equal constraint being applied as I sketch these. Now I'm going to go ahead and exit sketch mode by toggling the Activate 2D Sketch tool. And once I get out of sketch mode, the geometry is updated for me automatically. And as you can see, we have four holes. So I just saved myself the work of creating three separate features. And then I can always edit the properties of this feature again if I need to. This time I'm going to select Through All and then click OK. And now I have four holes passing through the entire solid body. I want to re-emphasize that you can use either a planar face on your model or a reference plane to sketch on an Alibra design. On the previous example, I sketched on the plane of the face of the model to create the hole. In this next case, I'm going to select the reference plane as the working plane and then activate 2D Sketch on that plane. Then I'm going to sketch a rectangular profile, select the extrude cut tool once again, and specify the type of extrude cut I want. In this particular example, I'm going to use the to next type. I need to select the reverse checkbox to make sure this is going in the correct direction, and then I can click OK. So now I've created this extrude cut from the ZX plane up to the specified face of an existing model. So in summary of what I've discussed in this segment, you can use the Extrude Boss and Extrude Cut feature tools to extrude a 2D sketch profile to either create or remove material in part design. This concludes this segment of the video.